Welcome back to Math Concepts. We are going to continue our study of basic probability. In this video, we are going to talk about something called the addition rule. Now, this applies to what we call compound events. In other words, sometimes the criteria for success can be met in a couple of different ways. And in those situations, we call them compound events. And to find the probability of that, we can use something called the addition rule. It works almost the way you think it works. There is a little bit of a wrinkle when the multiple ways overlap. So that's something we gotta be careful of. So let's go to the document camera and look at some examples. Oh, there's Sophie coming in. So. The key idea is finding the probability of a compound event using the addition rule. And just a note here, compound events have multiple ways to occur. So basically your key for alerting yourself that you're dealing with a compound event is do you see the word or? Let's look at a quick example right away. Okay. So let's imagine this scenario. We're rolling two dice, and we want to find the probability of rolling a 2 or a 12. And of course, in this situation, we're talking about two standard six-sided die. And when I say rolling a 2, I mean the sum on the two dice adds up to 2. Okay, so rolling a 2 or rolling a 12. Okay, so the probability of 2 or 12 is equal to the probability of rolling a 2 plus the probability of rolling a 12. Okay, now we know when we roll two dice that there are 36 possible outcomes. If you look at a previous video, we had a table where we listed all of them out. Now there's only one way to get a sum of two. Both of the die have to come up once. So there's one way to do that, there's one way to do that. We add the two of them together, we've already got a common denominator, so two out of 36 or one out of 18. All right, now, this example here was kind of a special case. The above example involves, whoops, that was very sloppy. The above example involves mutually exclusive events. And there is no overlap. When I say mutually exclusive events, I mean there's no way those two things can happen at the same time. This is the general formula that we need here. This is the general addition rule. Okay, notice over here we've got this. If we are dealing with mutually exclusive events, then the probability of A and B happening at the same time equals zero. So that doesn't factor in. But in a lot of other cases, we will have to look at that. In fact, let's check an example out right now. Okay, so let's imagine this. We're drawing a single card from a standard 52 card deck and we want to find the probability of drawing a jack or a heart. Okay, so the probability of a jack or a heart. Okay, now there are of course four jacks in the deck. There are 13 hearts. Okay, right, 52 cards in the deck, four suits. If you take 52 divided by 4 you get 13. So there's 13 cards in each suit. Okay, so we got to take the probability of a jack plus the probability of getting a heart in our draw. 
Okay, now as we just discussed, there are four jacks in the deck, so the probability of a jack is 4 out of 52. The probability of a heart is 13 out of 52. Now, there's something I have not accounted for yet. I have to realize that if I leave this as it is right now, I am overcounting. When I look at the probability of getting a jack and say that it is 4 out of 52, I am counting the jack of spades, the jack of clubs, the jack of diamonds, and the jack of hearts. Now when I say there are 13 hearts in the deck out of 52 cards, I'm counting the ace, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, king, and queen of hearts. Okay, so the jack of hearts got counted here, and it also got counted here. And that's why we have to do this subtraction. Okay, so let's total this all out. We get 16 out of 52, and that does reduce uh, to 4 out of 13. Okay, um, what you would need to do, add everything up, right? 4 plus 13 is 17, minus the 1 gives me 16. 16 out of 52. Those are both divisible by 4, so it reduces to this right here. Okay, and you should be able to just do this with generic events. Okay, so they're telling us here that the probability of event A is 0.2, the probability of event B is 0.5. I don't know why that has parentheses around it, we don't really need those. Okay, so the probability of A is 0.2, the probability of B is 0.5. The probability of A intersect B is 0.1. So the probability of A or B would be 0.2 plus 0.5 minus 0 0.1. And we get 0 0.6. Okay, so that formula we discussed earlier in the video gives us a way to relate all four quantities. It relates P of A, P of B, P of A and B, and P of A or B. So if you know any three of them, you can always figure out the missing one. Okay, one more example. A while back we talked about probability with tables. Okay, so I looked at an example out of our textbook here, so let me bring that out. Um, so we're looking at this table right here. Okay, we're imagining it's a survey. Okay, so using the table below, find the probability that a randomly selected person is under 18 or employed full-time. Okay, so under 18, that would be this row right here. Okay, so the probability that a randomly selected person is under 18. So probability of the person is 0 to 17. Okay, we would figure that out. And the probability that the person is employed full time, we'd figure that out. We'd also need to look for the overlap. Okay, we'd need the probability that they are in that row and full time. Okay, now remember, all these are going to be fractions. Okay, probability is always a fraction. Now, to get my denominator, I need to add up every number in this table. In the previous example that we looked at in an earlier video, they were nice to us, and they added everything up and gave us a grand total. Here, I'm going to have to do the work myself, so I'll just use my calculator to total everything out. So, I crunched the numbers. I added up every entry in this table and came up with 3,079. So that's my denominator in all of these cases. Now, if we're talking about a person being 0 to 17, I would add up the numbers in the first row going across. So in other words, I would take the 24 plus 164 plus 371 and that gets me 559. So the probability of somebody being under 18 is 559 out of 
3,079. For the probability of somebody being employed full time, I would add up everything in this column. In other words, 24 plus 185 plus 348 plus 581 plus 443. And that gets me 1,581. Now, the probability of the overlap, somebody being under 18 and employed full time, well, that's right there. That's those 24 people. Okay. So the probability of 0 to 17 or full time, I would take this plus this minus this. Okay, so I do 559 five, plus 1581 one minus the 24 that was in both counts. And I get 2116 out of 3079. Okay, so it's an application of the so-called addition rule.